As Donald Trump faces a potential indictment, the former president has unleashed personal attacks against investigators, the Democratic Party, and even fellow Republicans. According to the New York Times, he accused Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg of being a woke tyrant who was destroying Manhattan. He has also called his Democratic opponents animals and thugs, again, according to the New York Times. Now, Democratic Representative Ro Khanna joins us now to weigh in on this potential indictment of Donald Trump. Welcome, Representative. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What are your feelings about this potential indictment relating to the alleged hush money payments involving Stormy Daniels? Um, you know, I think there is, I have heard at least some concern, even from Democrats and Democratic leaning commentators, that, you know, the precedent, uh, no one should be above the law, obviously, a, a former president, a current president, whatever the case may be. But violating the, the precedent of not, you know, going after a former president. Um, on, on this issue, which doesn't seem quite, uh, it seems to be a little bit shakier legal grounds or shakier, I guess, importance level than even some of the other things Donald Trump is facing. Uh, what are your thoughts on the issue? Well, first, I don't think that members of Congress or senators should be commentating uh, on the judicial process. Let it play out. Let it, uh, uh, the facts uh, take place. People should be making independent decisions. And I actually have a lot of faith in our judicial process and our jury system for there to be a fair outcome. Uh, so I don't prejudge what the outcome would be. I do think in the scheme of things, the most serious uh, concerns that I have with the president's conduct was on January 6th. Uh, what he did uh, leading up to the insurrection and some of the interference on, on the elections. And that has been uh, what I have criticized most. Yeah, I mean, to that end, I appreciate not wanting to comment on ongoing investigations, but several other, you know, Democrat sympathetic commentators like Van Jones have pointed out that this is an issue precisely because there is a more uh, substantive uh, case being uh, built against him in Georgia, it's presumed. Um, and that, uh, to your point, it, that is what arguably people should be focused on. And if people are focused on what appears to be a politically motivated uh, indictment out of uh, New York, then it's, one, not going to inert to the long-term benefit of the Democrats, because it's not going to be success successful. And two, it will enable Donald Trump to present, position himself as the victim. He has already made $1.5 million in the three days after he claimed uh, uh, falsely on Truth Social that he would get arrested on Tuesday. Uh, Trump's 2024 campaign confirmed this amount to Fox News. And that money was raised from grassroots donations. Is there a concern that the Democrats are basically helping Donald Trump fundraise without getting very much on their end politically out of this indictment. Well, it's sad to me that in today's modern political climate, you basically have to be either kicked off your House committee or have a potential indictment to raise money. I mean, that's more a commentary on uh, our times. I, I guess, look, Brianna, I have never in my seven years of com Congress commentated uh, or, or commented or about a district attorney in my own district, any district attorney. I just don't think it's appropriate for members of Congress who have political influence to be saying whether someone should or should not uh, be bringing charges against anyone. It should be legally based, fact based. I will say this, that I have tremendous faith in the American judicial process uh, to sift through a lot of the, the noise. And if a prosecutor overreaches, uh, I don't think they get a conviction. And my guess is that any prosecutor is only going to want to bring a case that they can win. Well, speaking of money and politics and fundraising, you know, some people have looked with some scrutiny over your choice to uh, have a fundraiser hosted by uh, David Sachs. He is, you know, a Silicon, one of these Silicon Valley uh, billionaires who, uh, you know, has been very supportive of the bailout of SVB and the other banks that were involved in the crisis over the weekend. You have been clear that you think that there is an inequity between how these banks are able to get relief quickly and other populations like student debtors face a much more uphill battle uh, getting uh, congressional or executive approval for relief. However, we're supportive ultimately of the, the, uh, the government's involvement in the bailout here. How do you square 
pe what, what do you say to people who have concerns that t participating in a fundraiser, having a fundraiser hosted for you by someone who has such different political interests as yours, someone who has also uh, financially supported candidates like uh, J.D. Vance and Ron DeSantis is a conflict of interest? I find actually the criticism perplexing. It's coming from two places, one from uh, Hillary Clinton support. And David Sachs gave almost forty thousand dollars to Hillary Clinton in two thousand sixteen, mm -hmm. uh, and so I find it odd how they criticizing me when uh, he supported Hillary Clinton. And then for progressives and the some of the progressives, and I find that odd because if you, I've been criticized for my stance on Ukraine, uh, and uh, I strongly support Ukraine and have supported the president's policy. But if you look at what sparked part of David Sachs' support, he tweeted out that he was going to support me because I was one of the few people in the Congressional Progressive Letter who said we need to have dialogue as well. And that's really the genesis of uh, the support. And it's the public record. Someone can just look at Twitter and when he says he's going to support me and why and the First Amendment. And so I guess the question is, uh, should we not have support, even though we may disagree on 80 percent of issues, uh, if we agree on certain issues? I, I think that's the wrong type of standard for American politics. I think the progressive response would be, you know, and you know this as someone who was a co-chair of the Bernie Sanders campaign, that Bernie took the position that taking money from these kind of donors was kind of uh, on its face, de facto, a negative influence in the campaign, and that it created a relationship that would undermine the principal's ability to pursue other Issue, issue areas on which you might not agree, and that because it might jeopardize potentially the, the money flow. Do you disagree with Bernie's framing on why he rejected all uh, corporate money and even returned the one billionaire donation he got from the one progressive heir to the Disney fortune? Well, I have taken uh, the position, look, I don't take any PAC money, zero. I'm one of seven or eight members of Congress that does that. I don't take any lobbyist money. An individual's contribution is limited to uh, $6,600, which sounds like a lot, but in the context of millions of dollars, it's highly diluted. And I don't think any individual is uh, really in any way makes, has influence on, on my decisions. That is evidenced by the fact that, honestly, uh, the, the head of Silicon Valley Bank had contributed a couple thousand bucks to me years ago, which we returned. Uh, and I still voted against his exact position, which he was lobbying for on deregulation. So I think if you look at my voting record, I have never uh, taken a position because of the influence of money. I guess my position is similar uh, to what President Obama had, where he did not take PAC money, he did not take lobbyist money, he did take individual contributions, uh, and I feel comfortable with, with that position. I admire Bernie Sanders. Look, Bernie Sanders uh, is a saint of American politics. He never solicited, in my understanding, a single contribution uh, from anyone his entire political career. Uh, and uh, that's that's great for, for his standard. I have not, I don't pretend to have lived up to that standard, but I, my standard is uh, much better than the vast majority of people in Congress. Well, Representative Kano, we got to let you go. Thank you so much for uh, being here and always for making yourself so available to us. We appreciate how transparent Thank you. Um, you are as opposed to so many others in Congress. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.